What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. Today we're going to be going over a leg workout. Now with this workout today, this is actually going to be the heaviest day of the program that I've actually currently been running. Um, with that, that means I had two different options that I could have done today. First, I could have actually tested my one rep max because this is actually going to be basically peak week where I'm going as heavy as I possibly can and seeing how much my strength has improved over the course of about five weeks, um, which is how long I've been on this program. Now, what I choose or what I chose to do, as you'll see in the video, is the second option, which is basically you take your previous one rep max, put that weight on the bar, and then see, or and then try and get as many reps as you possibly can. Um, with that, depending on the reps that you get, you can actually calculate what your new estimated, or as I like to say, guesstimated, one rep max um, should be. Now, the reason I say guesstimated and estimated, or quotation marks, is because that's actually, it is just a calculation. So it's just a guess, it's not actually what you might or might not be able to hit. Because um, there's been times in the past when uh, I have been able to hit, say, 225 pounds on bench for seven or eight reps meaning that my estimated one rep max should have been closer to like 280, 270 pounds, something like that. Yet, in reality, I could barely probably do 245. <laughs> so everybody's strengths and everybody's body is going to be different. Some people are going to be a lot stronger at reps, um, whereas some people are going to be a lot stronger at just single maxing out um, movements. Um, however, like I was saying, with this, this is probably going to be the last heavy day, like really heavy day that I do for legs for a while, um, just because my body is starting to feel the stress of going, uh, ex uh, going exceptionally heavy ever from week to week and workout to workout. Uh, my joints are starting to get a little bit sore, so I definitely need to take a deload week, which I'll go over um, probably in these next couple videos a little bit, and. Then from there, I'm actually going to be switching up my workout routine a little bit, but I'll get into that when I actually get into the workout, so that'll be in probably next week. Um, but anyway, we're going to get into the workout today and the commentary. Now with this, oh, come here. we're going to do something similar to what I did in the last video, um, just because I really like the way that worked out, and it also makes things kind of nice. Um, makes it a little bit more interactive. So as you can see, I've got the video up right here, so we're gonna be watching the same thing, same time. So let's get right into the video and I'm gonna get right into the commentary. So as you can see, started out with just some standing calves um, on the Smith machine. Now, unfortunately, I didn't hit record on a, zoom, a more zoomed out shot, so you can't actually see that I'm really on the Smith machine, but, I'm on the Smith machine. <laughs> um, with that movement, you can either use like a box under your toes, or I, as you saw, I like to use a couple of plates stacked up just because they tend not to move as much, um, and just nice slow tempo. So then once we finish with that, we're doing four sets there, 12 to 15 reps per set. We move into one of my favorite calf exercises, which is seated calf raises superset with a squat, or I mean, a, um, yeah, a squat calf raise. I don't know what this is actually called, as you can see. That's just kind of what I like to call it. So, seated calf raise, pretty standard stuff. Um, really focus on your tempo. Is always full stretch when you go to the de when you go to the bottom. Full contraction at the peak. Then, with the seated or with the squat calf raise, as you saw, I'm really pressing my hamstrings against my calves. Now with that, what that's going to do is it's actually going to help you kind of constrict the muscle and prevent blood from flowing into it fully. So it's kind of like um, occlusion training. And it just kind of helps you get a much harder pump, at least I feel. Um, if you haven't tried them before, give them a try. I guarantee you your calves are going to burn. So rep range for that is going to be the exact same, 12 to 15 reps. Um, and sets are the same thing, four sets. So next. As you can see, I'm starting to warm up on my squats. Now with this, normally what I'll do is I'll start like one plate, just do five to 10 reps, really just focusing on 
getting blood into the muscles, getting the joints working, and just kind of getting everything ready to go. Then next I'll throw on another plate, do another like three to five reps, and basically as the weight gets heavier, I'm decreasing the reps that I'm using to warm up. Because the entire goal is to warm up the muscle. We're not trying to pre-fatigue or pre-exhaust any of the muscles right now, especially on a day when we're trying to um, go as heavy as possible. Oh, this stupid lens. Focus breathing a little bit. <laughs> but as you can see there, uh, getting into some of my top sets here, this is 325, and I think I got five reps, um, which is actually what it called for in the program. Um, so yeah, felt really good. Definitely my strength has gone up significantly. Um, and then let's see, what is this guy? 300 and looks like 35 pounds. Yeah, 335, There's, you can kind of see it. There's a 10 and then a five on the very end, kind of a bad angle, but let's see. So with all of my squats, as you see, I tend to do more of a low bar squat, meaning that the bar is further down on my back, um, which tends to be more of like a power lifting kind of squat. Um, you recruit with that a lot more glute and hamstring than you do with a high bar where the weight is gonna be a little further forward. So as you're coming down, you're gonna be engaging your quads more than your glutes and hamstrings. Um, then here's my top set, 340 uh, for four reps. Yeah, 340 for four reps. Again, stupid lens, focus breathing. Fortunately, I don't have anybody to record for me, so it's kind of set it up, set the focus and hope it stays focused. But yeah, as you can see, hitting depth every single rep. Um, the only thing I don't like about that is my butt is kind of rising before my chest, as you might have noticed there. And that's just something that I need to work on with my form because essentially with squatting, you want to be coming straight up. You want to be thinking of it as one um, fluid movement from the uh, bottom position all the way up. So whereas there it was kind of two movements where I'm breaking as my hips come up first and then my chest starts to come up. It's very slight, but if you look back there, you can kind of see it. So after that, move straight into stiff leg deadlifts. Now with this, as you can see, really focusing on the tempo. So um, going up at a really slow pace. So, and then down even slower. And what this is gonna do is it's really gonna allow us to focus on contracting those hamstrings and then stretching them out all the way through the bottom portion of the movement. Because uh, remember, a lot of movements, what a lot of people tend to do is they'll really force through the um, concentric portion or the positive portion of the movement, yet they always tend to kind of just let the weight fall or just let it go on the eccentric portion or the negative portion. Well, when you do that, what you're actually doing is you're missing out on half the rep. So if you're gonna be doing the work, you might as well put in 100% and get 100% of, um, of the results from it. Otherwise, you're, you're cheating yourself, basically. So, I don't know, just a little rant there, but anyway. With that, um, same thing as with our calves, our sets are gonna be four sets, and the rep range on that is actually gonna be a little lower, so around 10 to 12 reps. But again, we're going really slow and really focusing on the muscle that we're trying to target. So you're gonna be going a little lighter, not as heavy, not trying to show off, leave the ego at the door when you walk in the gym, um, and just really focus on stretching and contracting those hamstrings. So next, um, one of my favorite movements, not one of my favorite machines, this bench is super stiff, so it kills your quads. Um, just lying hamstring curls. So again, standard thing with there, uh, with that, four sets. That one I was going a little higher in the rep range, so around 12 to 15, and just nice, steady tempo. As soon as I started to fatigue, just pumping out a few extra reps. Next, um, this is something I like to do just to kind of isolate my glutes a little bit, and it is a cable pull through. You'll probably see girls doing this a lot. I don't have any miscons. I don't. I don't care. I do it. I want to get a nice ass too. So 
There you go. <laughs> if you haven't tried this before, give it a try. Main thing is keep your arms locked out so that you're keeping as much tension as you can on your glutes um, and really just focus on that muscle. It's easy to use a little bit more of your upper body, your lower back, your hamstrings um, if you don't really focus on the muscle that you're trying to target. And the same thing goes for just about any movement that we're doing here. Focus on whatever muscle group you're trying to target and just really get that mind-muscle connection. So with that, uh, we did four sets again. And I think on that one I actually did around like 15 to 18 reps per set. So just a little bit higher volume and just really taking my time on there. Really forcing extra blood into the glutes. Now this is going to be the last exercise and it's just a glute hyperextension. So with this, this is another one where you really want to focus on the muscle group that you're trying to target. Um, and one thing that really helps with that, if you look at my foot position, my toes are actually turned out and they're as wide as I can possibly go on this hyperextension. Um, now, what that'll do is it'll basically rotate and prone your hips and your legs or your femurs out so that you're able to actually activate your glutes and your hamstrings that much better. Um, but yeah, really focus on contracting from your glutes. That's a movement where a lot of people, if they don't think about it, they tend to use their lower back, which is what the exercise is actually for. But with some minor adjustments and a little bit more focus, <laughs> you can actually hit a completely different muscle group than is intended. Hope you guys enjoyed the workout. Give it a try. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one.